Welcome to this week's program. I'm Shannon Lurkey. After President Trump pulled out of the Paris Climate Agreement, Governor Dayton joined the U.S. Climate Alliance, a national coalition of governors committed to advancing clean energy and combating climate change. Joining me in the studio to talk about the governor's decision and what it means for Minnesota is the commissioner of the Pollution Control Agency, John Linkstein. Welcome. Thank you. What are the goals of the U.S. Climate Alliance? The U.S. Climate Alliance is aiming at improving uh, the reduction of greenhouse gases, making further progress across uh, state-led efforts through our economies, through our industries, and through our energy sector. So the goals are really to work together to cooperate on greenhouse gas emission reductions uh, that benefit not only our own uh, impact on the climate from this country, but globally. And why did Governor Dayton choose to sign on with this U.S. Climate Alliance? Well, the governor's goals for clean energy, for reducing the impact of our energy sector on our environment and on future generations of Minnesotans align very well with the U.S. Cl Alliance. And so the, the reason the governor did it is because he's interested in a, in a, a three-legged three stool, a strong economy, uh, environmental goals that achieve climate uh, benefits in the future and that future generations can count on these kinds of reductions for their own uh, well-being, the health and wellness of our planet for their future. Well, Minnesota had a goal of being 25 percent renewable energy by 2025. It seems that we're easily going to reach that goal. Um, so what more, what's the future for the state? Well, the energy sector goal is, is, is important for Minnesota and it was passed into law in, in 2007 under uh, Governor Plenty's leadership. I was in state government at the time and I recall the, the cooperative spirit of uh, the sectors of the economy, both industry and, and uh, energy sectors, governmental sectors, non-governmental sectors. It was, a, it was viewed as a win-win-win for our state. Good for our economy, good for our uh, environment, good for uh, our future uh, uh, and our society. And that's still true, so we're aiming at that 25 percent reduction in the energy sector. That said, that 25% reduction or creation of renewables mm -hmm. is still got us about 6% less in our greenhouse gas emissions portfolio over, 20, over 2005. So though we have made dramatic progress towards renewable energy, which is fantastic, and you're right, we are gonna achieve that overall goal and probably, probably surpass it. Uh, it. It's not the full picture so you're talking impact, about the greenhouse gas the greenhouse emissions, gas cutting those, emissions, and right. we're behind schedule on that, we're I believe. We're behind on that, okay. and we're, we really have a goal of reducing that by 25% uh, by, or returning to 2005 levels by uh, 2050, and we're not close to meeting that goal. We're on a trajectory that won't meet that. Our power sector, thanks to our uh, industries, our, our power generating sectors, both uh, XL Energy, uh, Minnesota Power and others are doing very well at achieving those renewable goals, which has reduced uh, the carbon emissions from our power generating sector by 23% since 2005. So we're making dramatic progress on that uh, sector, but there are other sectors that contribute to our greenhouse gases. And so the governor's decision is really not just limited to energy and energy, but for its own sake, but also all the other sources of carbon emissions in our state. And so what kinds of things would need to happen to get those emissions down? There are other sectors, certainly increasing and accelerating the uh, uh, advanced uh, energy production using renewables. Uh, energy conservation is another great way to reduce, by reducing demand, shrinking the need for energy. Uh, using less per kilowatt hour, we're going to, uh, and actually using less kilowatt hours are as, as the ways that you can reduce carbon impacts. We also have transportation as a significant sector of carbon emissions in our in our economy. So our vehicles, our, our, our heavy equipment, those are also contributors. Agriculture is another contributor to uh, how greenhouse gases are emitted. Carbon is, is released to the environment every time we apply fertilizers and 
how we do that, how efficiently we farm is an important uh, contributing factor for our greenhouse gas reductions. So we need to move more all in that sectors, direction. Yes, All okay. sectors forward, Let's yes. Let's go back to the U.S. Climate Alliance yep. for just a moment because there are some questions about its legality. Constitutional mm -hmm. law experts say it may violate the Interstate Compacts Clause of the Constitution where it says no state may enter into any agreement or compact with another state without the consent of Congress. Is that of any concern? Well, I'm not a constitutional lawyer, and I'm not an expert in this area. However, I would say that it, it looks on its face as a voluntary agreement. It's, it's a, an arrangement between states to work together toward their goals without binding any particular state or other state to the action. So I think it, it likely, in my view, would hold up to any challenge. That's why it perhaps is a, it may violate. I don't know that it is actually binding on any one sector of our economy. And that, that may be the question for the courts and for lawyers. As the state moves more towards reducing its, its emissions and its carbon footprint, um, there are those who fear that increased regulations that may come about through that will hurt jobs. What do you say to people who are concerned about that? Well, we did a report a few years ago uh, across state government. The Minnesota Environmental Quality Board looked at this question in 2014, released a report called climate solutions and economic opportunities and found that through the transition of cleaner energy production and the transition to a cleaner energy economy, we actually grew that sector of our economy by 35,000 jobs. So the opportunity for employment and for job creation is significant in the transition from uh, more traditional energy production to uh, lower sources of carbon emissions. When you look at coal, uh, and coal-fired power plants, they, they require a lot more operator interventions, things where people are employed to manipulate the physical plant itself. Natural gas, when it's converted from coal to natural gas, requires far fewer employees uh, to run. So within the energy sector itself, uh, those jobs that were tied to sort of the traditional forms of energy production are, are impacted. But I also know that our own uh, community college system is training people in the wind energy industry and they're creating jobs by uh, maintenance workers, electricians, uh, facility operators. And so as we see wind uh, generation go up, there is more employment per kilowatt hour from renewable energy than there is from the more traditional uh, carbon heavy sources of, uh, of um, energy production. So it's actually, it can be a win-win. And I think the governor is sensitive to that. Our administration has been looking to make the, a rational transition from the traditional sources of energy production to the future. And those renewable energy jobs, whether they be in solar uh, panel installation, uh, are good paying jobs, solid. Uh, when I was in Albert Lee with the Lieutenant Governor a couple of months ago, we, we interviewed a number of students and they, they come out of that two year program with $60,000 to $80,000 a year job offers on the table where they can live in greater Minnesota, they can contribute to their way of life and to, that, to their communities. Commissioner Stein, I want to thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thanks for inviting me.